Welcome to the August 19th, 2016 edition of Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the U.S. Justice Department launching an independent investigation into policies, training, and recruitment of the uh, Commerce City Police Force. The effort prompted by the Commerce City Police is part of a nationwide effort, including programs in St. Louis, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. Penny Cahoon from Westward. So we, this is a pretty big deal. Commerce City requested the U.S. Justice Department come in. Justice Department is accepting the invitation. Uh, but this is happening in Commerce City. We don't, all the issues that they've had, and they've been many, haven't made the major headlines that they have in, in Denver. What do you think officials in Denver and maybe Aurora are thinking when they're seeing the U.S. Justice Department come into Commerce City? Well, in Denver, they're thinking few, because you may recall, it wasn't that long ago when Denver, it was suggested that the that justice come in and do an investigation of the Denver Police Department when uh, several officers were caught on film brutalizing people in Lodo, mostly, but there were other incidents, too. And at the time, Denver acted like it would be the worst possible thing in the world to have the feds come in. A lot of people didn't think it would be the worst thing in the world. In the meantime, we've seen study after study after study done by Denver, both with the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department. So I have to say, good for Commerce City. They realized they had problems. They realized they were problems they were not going to be able to handle themselves and to bring in an outside group. Rather than pay all the consultants that Denver has paid, they're just going with the Justice Department. David Kopel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. The U.S. Justice Department comes to get involved. What is, in general, what does that mean and is it a good thing? I think it's a good thing in the case of Commerce City. I mean, they, as Patty said, they're, they're asking for it. The Justice Department has some expertise on, on this and a, a, a lot of, uh, a, a lot, tremendous amount of experience. Um, and it's the good side of the divided sovereignty that is set up in our Constitution. As James Madison said, well, when, when the states are messing with your rights, the people can go to the federal government for protection. And when the federal government's messing with your rights, you can go to the states for protection. And that, that division is helpful, and, and I think it's, it's coming in here. Justice Department interventions in big city police departments or, or medium city like Commerce City sometimes are helpful, sometimes not. One of the problems that Los Angeles had in the 90s with its awful Rampart scandal uh, there was caused by a previous Justice Department intervention where they set up a very elaborate quota system for hiring officers, which meant they had to lower standards. And all the research says that the leading cause of police problems, including corruption, is, is mediocrity. So you don't want so the Justice Department can sometimes be harmful, but they can be sometimes sometimes helpful. And if, if Commerce City uh, says they want want their help and advice, good for them. Ed Seeler from the Denver Business Journal, with the public and the community, regardless of not just Commerce City, but uh, the metro area, seeing the DOJ come into Commerce City, do you think folks who have been critical of Denver, maybe Aurora, other cities, will want and be increase the calls for the uh, Department of Justice to come in and help other cities? I mean, they certainly could. Um, you know, uh, this is not a program that uh, 150 cities are using now. I believe Commerce City is the, the 13th pro, uh, city in America that has requested this. And, and so the idea that every police department with an issue somewhere in the state is going to call them in, I mean, frankly, not only is that unrealistic, but the Department of Justice would say, I'm sorry, there are 49 other states. We've got places to work here. I mean, um, so I, I think maybe it will increase the pressure for transparency for people talking about what these other cities are doing. I mean, it's interesting what Commerce City is doing. Essentially, the business comparison in here is they're, they're hiring a consulting firm instead of, but instead of the Bobs, they're bringing in the Department of Justice. Um, and, and it will be really interesting to see two things, too. One, what the Department of Justice comes up with. I mean, the things that we know about, that we've been talking about, that are problematic in Commerce City seem to come from different places. An officer accused of sexual assault. I mean, you, you have an officer uh, that, that shot himself and then lied about it. Um, I mean, these are not uh, systemic issues that all seem to have the same background, unless there is a lot more going on under the surface that we don't know about. And so, you know, A, what will the Department of Justice be able to look at in all these crazy things and say, other than you've got a cultural problem in your department, Department, you need to fix that, you know, what can you do? And B, once they do give a list of recommendations, what's a department that clearly has a cultural problem uh, going to be able to do? If they can't rein in these officers now, how are they going to be able to rein them in later? So I think there's a lot of questions about what's going to happen here. It's good to see Commerce City do that. I don't think it's a trend, however. And Silveri, Executive Director of Progress Now Colorado, joins us. Uh, 
Like I said before, we don't see a lot of headlines with Commerce City, but the Department of Justice getting involved, it seems like a big deal, is it? Well, they requested it, and they said yes, and I think that's great. I agree with everybody at the table. You know, when I was in the legislature, we actually spent the last two years running multiple packages of legislation, bipartisan in nature, many of them, um, what we call rebuilding trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve. This is a problem that's nationwide right now. I mean, I don't think, quite frankly, that incidences have increased. I think that there are more cameras out there, and I think that people are reporting more often. I mean, the fact that we have citizens taking video, live video of misconduct on, you know, the side of police officers and also on the side of citizens makes people more honest. And it's it's nice that the Justice Department is taking this seriously. It's nice that a place like Commerce City is doing it. I wish Denver would have, quite frankly, decided that they would have liked to see what they can do to improve their programs as well. But maybe Commerce City and the Justice Department working together will bring to light some best practices that can then be shared with Denver and other big and medium city departments across the country. Good point. Dominic, let me yeah, just absolutely. correct one thing. I use the term sexual assault and I look down and realize it's actual, actually unlawful sexual conduct uh, that an officer had been accused of. Don't want to put the wrong thing out there. Well, as long as we're doing corrections. Back <laughs> in, in, in the main show, I have referred to Denver Sheriff's deputies assaulting uh, Jamal Hunter. That they didn't assault him. They they were aware of and tolerated an assault on him by uh, other inmates in the jail. Colorado Inside Out post game and a corrections episode. <laughs> Patty, do you have anything? Or you're good. I stand by every incoherent thing I said. <laughs> 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 so do we. That's all the time we have for Color Inside Post Game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.